I see you Child, I know you Bring your burdens Bring your labor Come to me Come to me Come to me Welcome to Liturgy of the Word. It is Thursday of the 15th week of Ordinary Time. My name is Rick Messina. Let's get started. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Let us begin by asking him for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who desired the virgin Saint Kateri Tekawitha to flower among Native Americans in a life of innocence, grant through her intercession that we all are gathered into your church from every nation, tribe, and tongue, May they magnify you in a single canticle of praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The way the just is smooth, the path of the just you make level. Yes, for your way and your judgments, O Lord, we look to you. Your name and your title are the desire of our, of our souls. My soul yearns for you in the night. Yes, my spirit within me keeps vigil for you. When your judgment dawns upon the earth, the world's inhabitants learn justice. O Lord, you meet our peace to us, for it is you who have accomplished all we have done. O Lord, oppressed by your punishment, we cry out in anguish under your chastising. As a woman about to give birth, rise and cries out in her pains, so are we in your presence, O Lord. We conceived and writhed in pain, giving birth to wind. Salvation we have not achieved for the earth. The inhabitants of the world cannot bring it forth. But your dead shall live, their corpses shall rise. Awake and sing, you who lie in the dust. For your dew is a dew of light, and the land of shades gives birth. The word of the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer. You 
you, O Lord, abide forever, in your name through all generations. And you will arise and have mercy on Zion, for it is time to pity her. For her stones are dear to your servants, and her dust moves them to be. rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height, from heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the best invitation you could ever get. It's an invitation to discover the purpose of your life, and it's, it's open to everyone, to all people. But it's directed to the least expected, as always with Jesus, to people like me and people like you. Jesus invites anyone who is tired and weary to come to him. If you're worn out, exhausted, maybe you've been doing things your own way with your own strengths, Maybe you have the wrong priorities. Maybe you misunderstand what God requires of you. Maybe you lost your way. There's no simple worldly answer to the complexity of our problems, but Jesus provides an invitation and a promise. And the simplicity of his promise is striking, right? He offers himself. He says, come to me. But what does that really mean? It, it, it's not a promise of uh, rest from work. Rather, it's a promise that the work you, you will be doing, that you will be doing with him, will be joyful and a blessing upon your life. He will give you rest to your soul because when you submit to him and take on his yoke of service, he will be doing the real work. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And this is a re reference to the yoke of an animal would have on his shoulders to carry a heavy burden. A yoke can also join two animals that can share the load, the workload, evenly to be more productive, and the older, experienced animal can train the younger animal while they work together. They yoked usually an older animal younger, the older training the younger. Jesus is asking us here to share and be partners with him in his work, his ministry, and service to him. He will equip us, 
train us, support us, love us. He wants to enter into a relationship with us. And the yoke of Jesus is easy because he shares it with us. Actually, like I said, he does all the work. When we're on our own, we work against the purpose of why we were created. And it's exhausting and it's frustrating and we are weary and we are burdened. But with Jesus, just as the yoke for an animal is tailor-made for that specific animal, each of us has been created for a custom fit ministry purpose and role in life. The yoke of Jesus has been designed perfectly for each one of us, tailor-made for our own gifts, talents, and even our weaknesses, designed perfectly for us to make us like him, to fulfill the purpose we were meant for, that we were created for. And there is no better feeling in the world than fulfilling the purpose of why you were created. And there may not be only one specific defined way to fulfill your life's mission, right? It it, it could be a series of options and decisions that Jesus wants to help us navigate. With him at the wheel, the burdens of life, the burdens and responsibilities of life, they're lighter, they're easier to manage, and your life is full of blessings. Life isn't automatically easy and free from pain and suffering, but even those experiences can bring us closer into closer union with him. As I was uh, reflecting on this and preparing, um, a verse kept coming back to me, and I I love this verse, and I think he is, Jesus is truly the fulfillment of the Proverbs verse, verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. So when he invites us to come to us, he is asking us to turn away from the things that we are currently depending on. And turn to him. It's a call to the intimacy of a relationship. And yes, we must change our lives and transform our lifestyle, but he forms us to be like him as we submit to the person of Christ, who is humble and meek. We too become humble and meek and peaceful and loving. The only way to truly fulfill our life's purpose is through Jesus. And he makes this invitation to come to him for exactly that reason. He is the one answer to every question, concern, fear, and need that we will ever have. He is our hope. And the invitation is open. Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, two questions for you. Will you accept his invitation? And will you accept his purpose for you, not just by word, but by action, in every corner of your life? Thank you for joining us today. God bless you.